There are no signs out front, no heads up given to neighbors. Group homes largely under the radar and popping up all across the Houston area. Channel 2 investigates discovered dozens of facilities operating really under a patchwork of rules that are different in every city. Tonight we are exposing problems inside these homes and outside when trouble spills into the street. Investigator Joel Eisenbaum reveals why it's so hard to regulate group homes and how you can find out if there's one in your neighborhood. In neighborhoods across our area, perhaps even yours. Very often police show up, sometimes taking people away in handcuffs. These are the homes that seem to have an impossible number of people inside. Two to three bedroom homes, and there's maybe as many as eight to 10 to 12 people living in that home. Can you tell me a little bit about this group home real quickly? Group home is really a catch-all term for lots of unrelated people living together. But you peel it back and it's more complicated. There are dozens of subcategories, each one governed by a different set of laws. Hi. Oh my God. This place in Southeast Houston is licensed as an assisted living facility. Look how filthy. But that endorsement isn't much comfort to this 60-year-old woman in a wheelchair who described to us her relationship with a roommate. She told me, yeah, yeah. One of your roommates you don't get along with? Yeah. Is that tough for you, though? Jump down. In this cramped bedroom, three women live together. The walls are dirty. The sheets are dirty. Is that a bed bug? Uh-huh. And the floor is dirty, too. That's an attendant picking up a discarded piece of bloody gauze. We inquired with management, who gave us a tour of selected rooms. Okay, we're not allowed in this room, though? No, sir, because they're doing laundry. The CEO of the Love and Joy Personal Care Home on Mallow Street makes no apologies. No place is going to be perfect, but we have paid and hired staff to clean this facility. So our staff do a darn good job at cleaning the facility. For everything that can happen inside a group home, it's usually not until the trouble spills outside that the neighbors really take notice. We have at least two group homes on my street. This group home resident was arrested for pummeling his Missouri City neighbor. Bert Silverstein has had enough. They finally hauled him off and took him to a hospital. Ma'am, can we just talk to you real quickly? Just want to know how many you got living here. We found no registration information for this supposed group home. But records show the owner actually lives here. Those same appraisal district records show they own a lot of houses. I'm looking for the city to take better ownership of supervision and monitoring these facilities. But Missouri City says its hands are tied, and they're pretty much right. Federal disability law bars city governments from regulating so-called community homes. They're designed for higher functioning people with disabilities. You had told us yesterday this place was fully licensed to operate, and that doesn't seem to be the case. After a deadly fire last year, Houston City Council passed an ordinance to better monitor boarding houses. Yet another classification of group homes with another set of rules. I, again, don't mind a group home being nearby, provided they are acting as upright citizens in our neighborhood. Bottom line is the laws governing group homes are inconsistent. But if you want to try to figure out what's on your block, check out click2houston.com. Under the Investigates tab, we've got access to some helpful directories. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News.